Hey everybody, welcome. It's Coach MJ here. I am here tonight to talk with you about should you do a marathon in the off season? So I'm going to wait a few seconds for people to jump on. I know I missed last Sunday. Yeah, but I will, uh, I will, I will stick to the Sunday night 7 p.m. thing because it seems to work. But um, hey, Janine, welcome, welcome. Hey, G hey, Gina, girl, look at my nails on fleek. Mm-hmm, yep. Hi, Han hi, Hannah, congratulations on your wedding. I haven't talked to you since you got married. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, hey. Anyway, um, I know you guys probably have all like a gazillion things to do, but this is a, a really important topic because uh, I, I get this question all the time. So I thought I would take the time to do a quick video and talk with you about should you do a marathon? Hello, Jennifer. Girl, I saw your costume the other night. Mm-hmm. Yep. I saw it. I know, right? Aren't, aren't those nails great? Okay, like, aren't they cute? I know they're cute. Like, anyway, I know. So, okay. <laughs> No, I am not a fashionista. I just, for some reason, it just hit me that I, I like having my nails look good. So, okay. So let's talk about this. Should you do an off-season marathon? And this pertains to mostly triathletes. Because if you're just a marathoner, then, I mean, should you do an off-season marathon? Well, no, because marathon is your season. So the first thing you want to do is to review your 2016 season, right? Check it out. Uh, what you know? What what were your goals? What did you do? When was your last race? How many miles were you putting in, right? Those are the things you have to kind of look at to see. Should does 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 this off season marathon make sense? And I have, I have done it myself. I have done an off-season marathon and I have done seasons where I didn't do an off-season marathon and I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot of things. I've also coached hundreds of athletes to this same question and there's definitely a common formula on, on what works and what doesn't work. Hey Aaron, thank you for joining. What do you think about my fingernails? Mm -hmm. I mean guys could like it too. They're cute, right? They're cute. I love my nails, nail place. They're awesome. Anyway, okay, so you have to take a look at your 2016 season. And I think the most important thing, not everybody here is an Ironman, but some of you are. If you just finished an Ironman, say, I don't know, Wisconsin, what's, what's after that, Chattanooga, Maryland, you might not want to do a marathon right away. There's definitely, you got to build in some recovery time. But the cool thing is, is they tell you, you know, oh, you built all this fitness. Now you can go right into this marathon. Well, you still need to like step back from running for a little bit. If you ran that marathon, the truth of the matter is, for those of you who haven't done an Ironman before, the truth of the matter is a lot of people in Ironman don't actually run it. They walk it or they do some kind of run walk combination, which takes less out of your body. I mean, it takes, I think mentally, it takes a lot out of you, but, but I think if you, if you actually run, if you actually run that entire marathon in your Ironman, the rule of thumb, and I think I've said this before, is a day per mile that you ran. That's 26 days. So when do you really want to do that next marathon? You have to think about those things, guys. But if you're not, if you, I mean, if your plan is to run, walk it or walk it, or you did walk it. That, that's a little different thing because I think that you are a little less beat up. So Iron Man beats you up no matter who you are, right? But the run is the thing that beats you up the most. So if you end up not running that entire thing, whether that's your plan or whether that just happened to be what, what happened to you on race day, it, it beats you up. So you really need to make sure you take the time to recover because if you don't, so you're going to set yourself up for injury. So don't do that. You're determined to do an Ironman since you have... <laughs> Thanks, Gina. Woot, woot. Uh, you know, yeah, let's do it. Let's. we got to get you on a plan. we got to get you on a plan. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Andy. Hey, Phil. Phil, where you been, dude? Haven't talked to you in a long time. Hey, Jackie. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so number two, and I think this one is just as important, is what is the purpose of this marathon? So case in point, and I'll tell you, you know, I've got lots of stories, but I know you don't want to hear them all. Um, 
when I was, uh, I was very early on in my triathlon career and, and I knew running was my weakness. It was, you know, everybody picked on me for it and told me I'd be really good if I could actually run. And I thought, you know what, I, I can do this. I can, I can run. So after Chicago triathlon, and this was 2006, I uh, quit doing any swimming and biking. I just focused on my run because my goal was to get to Boston. That was my goal. So I just wanted to make, I'm like, I want to make myself a better runner. And if that cost me a little bit in the triathlon world, that was okay because I was, re my, you know, you got to get your A and your B and your C goal, right? Well, my A goal was Boston. So I focused just on running and I was able to do it. Okay, so that was my purpose, right? I, other people have purposes of, uh, so I did the, the Goofy Challenge, and I have some an athlete who's doing the Dopey Challenge this year. And I think the goal is just, you know, to do it, to go and have fun. You know, it's a bucket list thing or whatever it is. That's the goal, is to just do it. So she doesn't really care about, you know, PRing or qualifying for Boston or doing a four hour, it doesn't really matter. It's just to do it and go and have fun and say that she did it. So that's another thing because that number one is mentally different, but physically different too. Obviously, if you're going to plan some run walks, you're going to stop and take pictures with the animated characters or whatever, then, then that's not going to take quite as toll on the body as, as it would if you were just going to try and run and do the best that you can do. Hey, Todd. Hey, Karen, thank you guys for joining. Um, share this if you think that anybody else needs to know whether they should do it because a lot of people think they need to do an off-season marathon and I'm going to tell you right now, depends on your goal. My, when, when my goal became to be a better Ironman athlete, I quit doing out-season marathons and I got incredibly faster. So I'm just going to tell you, it just depends on what your goal is. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, Depends on what's more important to you. Number three, injuries, training. Hey, Darlene, welcome. Injuries, so, or injuries. If you've been significantly injured or injured for a good amount of time in 2016 or, or towards the latter part of the year, you probably want to not do a marathon in the off season. You want to give your, your body that time to recover and you might feel recovered. But if you go and tax your body with the, the marathon training that you're about to do, you're probably going to get re-injured or maybe even do something worse, and that's, that's not good. Hey, Annette. Annette, come to the pool. Hey, George. Welcome. Tell I Ivy I said hi. Um, the other thing is your training. How solid has your training been? I mean, have you been doing the runs? Have you been doing longer runs? Are you a sprint uh, uh, athlete? Are you an uh, Olympic athlete? Wh what has your training been like? And are you ready to tackle a marathon? Now, general rules, Hal Higdon's, I think it's like 18 weeks, but you're supposed to start with a long run base of six, we six miles. Do, do you have that? Are you able to fit that in your schedule? I mean, think about those things. I think a lot of times we all get caught up with the bling. We want that, oh, that cool medal or that cool jacket or whatever. And if that's your goal, that's great. But if your goal is to do the best that you can do, you might want to rethink the timing and the races that you do. Hey, Zbo. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Congratulations. Um, so Lisa just jumped on, guys. She actually won overall female today in a 5K. Way to go, girl. So proud of you. Thank you. Congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, so want to want to take into consideration your injuries and your training. Okay. Number four is your experience level. Now, the more experienced you are, the more this kind of thing can happen, can make sense. Can, you can work with it. But I get a lot of people, I get a lot of questions, you guys. I'll get a lot of first-time Ironman athletes who have never done a marathon, and then their plan is to, I need to get that marathon under my belt before I do my Ironman. So I'm going to do my marathon in May, and then I'm going to do my Ironman in September. No. Mm -mm. Nope. I would tell you absolutely not 100% no. There's no downtime in there. there you, you, there's no, there's no, you, you have to look at your schedule and you have to you have to plan it so there's no there's no downtime you can't you can't recover from that so I would tell you that you you really you know you just don't want to do it and, and if 
my suggestion to somebody like that would be do your marathon and then push your Ironman to the following year. However, a lot of people don't want to do that. You know, we, we're, I want it and I want it now. Uh, skip the marathon altogether. Just train for it. You just, you can do it. You can do it. Missed you at the country soul yesterday. Oh, that wasn't me. Hi, darling. Hey, hey, Jen. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. Please let me know what kind of questions that you have. We're talking about your experience level. If you're like an endurance athlete and you've been doing this for a while, you can probably get away with doing a marathon in the off season. But I'm going to tell you guys, uh, let's see, I've been doing Ironman for four years, maybe five years, and was doing a marathon on the out season, and it cost me my marathon in the next year. And I was so mad at myself because I did it because it was fun, and I wanted to say I did it, and I, and I did. I did the Dopey Challenge, and I, it, it, it cost me. It cost me. It cost me my Lake Placid. I know it. That's what it. That's what happened. Am I okay with it? Well, I have to be, right? But if I had been a smarter athlete back then, I would have said, "Forget the dopey." I just. What's my goal? My goal was to do well at Lake Placid, and I couldn't do it because I could. And and dopey guys is in January. Lake Placid is in July. It wasn't enough time. That was six months. It wasn't enough time. Hey, Carol. Welcome. All right. And then the next thing you want to look at, number five, is your 2017 planning and goals. And just like I was saying, so if you want to do this off-season marathon, maybe January, maybe February, whatever it is, you're, if you're going to do an Ironman after it, then it needs to be more than six months later. So if you do that marathon in January, your, marathon, your Ironman needs to be like, I don't know, September, October. That could work. My opinion I wouldn't do it, but running is not my thing. Running is not my thing. Now, if you are a shorter distance athlete, right? Say you do sprints, Olympics, maybe even some halves, but you're working your way up to do Ironman, oh yeah, do that marathon. Get, get that under your belt. Get that experience. Know what it feels like to be on your feet for three and a half, four, four and a half, five hours, whatever it is, because that will play very nicely into your race and be able to give you strength and power to continue on when you think that you, you can't. So that's what I would say to that. How many races should a person plan for 2017, Darlene asks. That's very individual. Um, oh my gosh, I just noticed my camera's crooked. Hang on. I'm such a dork. Wait. <laughs> oh, now it's more crooked. All right, I'm just going to leave it. It could be crooked. I don't care. Okay. How, many, how many races should you plan? A lot of it depends on you. It depends on your schedule, what your training schedule is like, what your family life and work life is all about. But I'll tell you, I mean, I've, you can race your way to fitness, but I think, and that's okay. You just have to know what to expect. So for example, I just was talking with, to, with an athlete who wants to do her first half Ironman in September next year. And she thought, well, I'm just going to do Olympic in August, and then I'll do my half. I'm like, well, no, no, no. I, I would add, like, the sprint, like, towards the beginning of the year, say May, June. I'd add a, an Olympic. And don't treat those as race races, but, like, as warm-ups, as previews, as practices, as what to expect. Get the race day jitters. Get all that stuff out of the, out, you know, get the cobwebs out, right? Because when you don't race for six months, it, you get nervous. I mean, everybody gets nervous, I think. Um, but, but you have to go through that. And then, so that when her half Ironman day comes, she'll be all ready and prepared. But that's, that's great. I mean, five or six, I think is probably average. I've done a season where I've done like 17. Yeah, I know it's crazy. Go order a pizza, lay on the couch and binge watch some Netflix already. Thank you, Steve. I will, I will, well, <laughs> I will be watching some Netflix later, but I have work to do. This is more important. I got to talk to my people about should they do this marathon. And if you are already like if you so if you are going to do this uh, half Ironman, I'm sorry, if you're going to do this marathon here in the off season, you've already signed up, you've already committed to it, you've already trained training for it and everything. Think about how it plans plays into your goals for 2017, and that's how you're going to run it. 17, that sounds like you did something right, Lisa. Well, you know what? Shorter stuff, because you're an experienced athlete, right? You're not new anymore. So 17 isn't like such a, it's not a big workload for someone like you. After baby, when should you start training? Well, that depends, Shannon. We can, You and I should talk about that. I think that's also different for everybody, but you can start training actually pretty quickly. 
Um, and you're due, I, I thought you were due this month, right? No, I thought it was October. Hi, Sue, welcome. Where have you been? You haven't been to the pool. But so yeah, if you've already decided to do this marathon, this off season, it's okay. Uh, but then you need to think about what is your goal for that marathon? And then what is your goal and how does that play into 2017? So if you're doing, say, a marathon in January, February, and your half Ironman or your Ironman or whatever is in June, July, maybe you don't want to try and PR that marathon. Or maybe that's your goal. Maybe your goal is to get to Boston and you really want to just crush that marathon. That's cool. But then know that you're sacrificing those later races in the early part of 2017. Hi, Emma. Welcome. Yes, we will connect for sure. Yay. Okay, cool. What other kind of questions you guys have? Because someone told me like The Walking Dead is on and that's just way more important than my video. Really? The Walking Dead? It's just a bunch of dead people walking around. It's the same show over and over. Got really sick of it. Sorry. I just got really sick of it. I liked it at first. I liked the first few seasons. What other questions you guys have? So here it is. Let me recap for you. So if you're thinking about doing an off-season marathon, you need to look at your 2016. How did it go? What did you do? When was your last race? Did you do an Ironman like four weeks ago? You shouldn't be doing a marathon yet. It's not in, oh, it's not till nine. Okay, cool. What's a walking dead? No, it's actually not a bad show. The first couple of seasons anyway. Number two, what's the purpose of the marathon? I think that's probably the most important one for me because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a coach that I don't really like to say, no, you can't do that. But what I will tell you is if you do that, what you're going to sacrifice later on. I mean, that's, that's kind of how I am. So if, the purpose of your marathon is to PR, to make yourself a better runner, to go to Boston, then, then okay, let's do that, right? But if your purpose is to just like throw a marathon under your belt because you want to do an Ironman next year and you're not really recovered from this year, it doesn't really make sense. It's, it's actually, it, has, it actually has a potential to hurt you more than it does help you. So you have to think about that. Is an Olympic in May good planning for a half in July? Yes, Jennifer. Yes, you should do that. Hey, Wendy. How are you? Girl, you see? Okay, Wendy. I'm going to use Wendy as an example. Wendy just did Ironman uh, Wisconsin. Congratulations, by the way. And then the Chicago Marathon. So why don't you tell us, Wendy, how'd that work out for you? Those are so close together. I can't imagine that you PR'd your marathon. I can't imagine that. I mean, unless you walked your entire marathon at Wisconsin, and I, I think I, I saw your time, and I don't think you did that. Hi, Lilia. Did I say hi? Hi. Welcome. I'm thinking of half Ironman, but still like to run half marathons. When should you start training? Depend, uh, for you, Darlene, uh, probably six months out, I'd say. I'm okay on the bike and run, but need to start swimming. Well, Darlene, hello. I've got two master's teams. You know how to join them. I will help you. You're a better swimmer than you give yourself, give yourself credit for. You could do this. If you really want to do it, I'll help you. Let me know. Come on, Wendy. Respond. I know that marathon was tough because you were beat up. You were still beat up from, from Iron Man. I, that, that's what I think. Okay. So we were back to that. Injuries, training. If you've been injured most of... <laughs> Thank you, Lilia. I appreciate that. Um, most, if, if you were injur injured most of, of 2016, you probably just give yourself a break. Why are you putting yourself through this? That marathon's not going anywhere. Do it next year. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And then experience level. The more experienced you are, the more time you have spent as an endurance athlete, the easier it is for you to take on an off-season marathon. And then um, 2017. You don't want to start stacking things too close because a lot of times I think what we do is we're like, oh, we want to sign up for this and that and then this and then that. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, it's 2017 and I want this and this and this. But then we don't look at, like, where that line, where, where's that recovery, where's that downtime? Here's the thing, guys. You can never, I don't care who you are, professional athlete, beginner athlete, Olympic athlete, whatever you are, you cannot be in your peak 12 months a year. You need your downtime. Make, your, make sure that you give yourself that downtime. You need to be able to change gears, change focus, relax, stop running, do some, do some riding, do some rowing, do some CrossFit, 
do some skiing, do something that's not swim, bike, run. Give yourself a chance, get work different muscles, do something different. And I think, you know, stairs, stairs is a big thing that, that you know, here on the, in the south suburbs that a lot of people do. And I think it's great. I, I, it builds biking, it builds running, it builds uh, aerobic capacity. Oh, stand up paddleboard? Or are you just saying, what's up? <laughs> stand up paddleboard. That is great. Okay, if you've ever stand up paddleboard, I, so I have. Um, number one, it works my ankles. Oh my goodness. And I have the most, I have the worst balance ever, you guys. I'm terrible at it. But it's a core workout. If you really do it right, that sorry, the dog kicked the tripod. We have this, I have this nice house. He always has to sit like right with me no matter where I am. So he's kind of snoring right here. He just kicked the tripod. Anyway, but stand up paddleboard. Yeah, um, you learn balance for sure. But and it's really fun. It's fun. I will tell you, Lake Michigan's pretty tough to stand up paddleboard on, though, because even when Lake Michigan looks calm, because you're like, you know, swimming calm and stand up paddleboard calm is two different things. Okay, okay, he's leaving now. So, I, I, the okay, the first time I went to stand up paddleboard, went to Lake Michigan, and I'm like, oh, it's calm, and I'll, I got on there. I got my butt kicked. I got knocked off, over, and it was fun and all that, but it was super wavy and I couldn't I'm like how do people even do this this is such a hard sport then the next time I went back it was uh smooth as glass and it was it was actually really really fun um and you can go really fast but it does it's it's a good it's a good lower body um ankles for sure it's a good core workout uh but if you haven't done it you should try it hi Tara um welcome welcome is half marathon in June before half Ironman okay Lilia, because you're doing Muncie, uh, no, too close, right? Too close. If you're going to do half marathon, you got to do it earlier. And why do you even need to do it? You've done like a gazillion of them already, right? Or, or like if you're going to do it, hold on, let me back that up. If you're going to do it as just a training run, so you're going to, so what I like to do, I like to have my athletes do um, race day rehearsals. So, if you're going to do it, say, three weeks out and plan it as a race day rehearsal, like you wear exactly what you're going to wear in, in your triathlon and you take your nutrition in exactly as you're going to do it, then I would say it's okay. But I don't want you, but you can't race it. You can't race it. Hey, Kevin, welcome. All right, guys, what else do you have before I hop off? I was thinking easy, not a PR. Yeah, you could probably do that, but but we could talk about it. We could talk about it. Timing has to be right. You could be screwing yourself up. Um, and don't, what I would tell you specifically, don't sacrifice a bike ride for your run because you're a stronger runner than you are a bike rider. Finished my first marathon today. Congratulations, Dan. That's awesome. Did you, what did you do? Grand Rapids? Wasn't it Grand Rapids today? Gotta be honest, it's going to be tough to do 112 on the bike before my run. Maybe a couple, a couple half Ironman in 2017. Dan, are you signed up for an Ironman? In 2017? Wendy never answered. Yeah, you know why? Because she was tired. She was tired at the Chicago Marathon. Uh, come on, Dan. Answer. I, you know what? Sorry, this Facebook Live has like a 15-second delay, I think it is, or 17-second delay. Yes, it's absolutely tough to run a marathon after a 112-mile bike. Absolutely tough. I think out of all the ones I've done, I've only actually ran... Two, full out, ran, without walking. And it's super hard. It's super hard. But your mind gets to you before your body does. Naperville today. Oh, no arm. Well, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, congratulations, Dan. I, Naperville, I thought. Why did I think Naperville was in November? Huh. No Iron Man yet. Okay, Grand Rap Grand Rapids of Naperville. Yes. No, I, a friend of mine posted his Grand Rapids medal today. So that's why I thought Dan was at Grand Rapids. Um, no Iron Man. Should you do two half Ironmans next year? I would say potentially, yeah. Um, but I would also tell you this. They don't sell out like Iron Man used to. And even Iron Man doesn't sell out in the 15 minutes that it used to sell out. And take your time and decide and plan out. Um, I would maybe do a half Ironman, take some time to recover and then, you know, do the half Ironman like as practice and then like race one later, like all out, pull all the stops, do the best you can. Naperville used to be in November. They bumped it 
they bumped it up a couple years. Yeah, see, I thought so. Le Leah did her first n marathon in Naperville. Yay, congratulations to all you Naperville runners. That's awesome. All right, cool. Okay, guys, I am going to hop off here unless there are any other questions. I've seen many riders after a 100-mile bike ride go run. How many miles would they run usually considering they were training? Well, Darlene, if you're going to see a 100-mile bike rider go for a run, it, they're typically training for Ironman, and they can go anywhere from, I would say, two miles to maybe six. I think six is long. I think I think it's excessive. You'd have to be a very experienced triathlete for me to recommend you do something like that. I personally have never done that far after a 100-mile bike ride, uh, but I know it it does happen. But I usually prescribe time versus miles because you never know what it's going to be. Um, hey, Tracy, we're just about to jump off, but thank you for hopping on. Um, if you know anybody who can benefit from this information, you guys, I am going to ask you to please share this video. Uh, and I will be back. I have stopped doing Wednesday nights because it just didn't seem to be working out for anybody. I will be back on next Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. And I think my topic is going to be on swimming on next week. On uh, five things that good swimmers don't do. So... You want to make sure you don't do those things. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I totally appreciate it. Uh, keep the questions coming. Keep the comments coming even after this broadcast. If you're joining me just for the replay, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Please post the questions, comments, whatever. I will go back and review all these. And if I don't see you, please um, let me know that you're here. And I will see you next week. Have a great rest of your Sunday night, guys. Take care.